State. Uh, Sokoto State had uh, Mr. Bello Mohammed and, of course, uh, Mr. Abubakar Badaru, former governor of Jigawa State, and just now Ambassador Yusuf Tuga of Bauchi State. And the next nominee is making his way to the podium where uh, he will be asked questions on what he'll be bringing to the table if nominated as minister. Remember, we are live right here on Channels Television at the ministerial screening of ministerial nominees sent to the Senate by President Bola Tinubu. Yes, we have the we have uh, before us distinguished uh, Senator Abubakar Sani Danladi, another nominee of Mr. President. Can you just uh, summarize your resume? before your colleagues. Senate President, the Deputy Senate President, distinguished Senators, good afternoon all. My name is Sani Abukara Sani Daladi. I'm from Taraba State and also a nominee from Taraba State. Your Excellency, I want to use this opportunity to thank Mr. President for having the confidence in nominating me as a nominee minister. Taraba State. Also, as a colleague in the 8th Senate, I was here together with you, doing everything possible to ensure all the assignments we have been given in this chamber. We have done it successfully. Your Excellency, if given the opportunity and clear me, I want to assure the, 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 the Assembly, this Senate, that I'm going to provide the synergy between both the executive and the legislator because of my experience. I'm a former councillor, former chairman, former deputy governor, former acting governor, former senator. With this experience, I believe 
if opportunity given to me today, this humble Senate will clear me. I want to assure you, I will do everything within my capacity to bring the synergy, both the executive and the legislator. Point of order, Senator Ning. Mr. President, order 55 sub 3. And it says every senator, when he or she comes into the chamber, shall take his seat or her seat and shall not at any time stand in any, uh, any of the passage in the pathways. I think the rule explains it. We are on a very serious assignment. Yes. And the way and manner we move around does not in any way speak well of uh, this, this, this chamber. And I hope the Senate President should guide us, all of us. <laughs> Point of order is sustained. Senator Abu. You may go back to your seat. Senator Gumer, I don't know whether you people are holding a different session. Uh, Senator, uh, Senator Bomai, we want a, a solemn assembly. We want the chambers to know that this is a very serious business. Senator Guta, go back to your seat. Yes, is that true? Any, 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 uh, anybody from uh, Adamawa? Oh, is it Taraba? Any senator from Taraba? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I am Harun Amanu. I represent Taraba Central. Mr. President, you will agree with me that from the presentation by the nominee, Mr. President, the nominee is a grassroots politician is somebody who has started from the inception of this democracy, from the councillor to the council chairman, deputy governor, acting governor, and a member of this distinguished Senate, Mr. President. I believe by the tradition of this Senate, having been part of this distinguished Senate, Your Excellency, the nominee should take a bow and go. But before then, Mr. President, I also want to use this opportunity to thank Mr. President for nominating a grassroots politician. I must say that Tarabans are very, very happy with this nomination. 
the vast majority of our people are very, very happy, especially the political class in Taraba State. They are having someone who is one of them, a grassroots politician, being nominated by Mr. President. So, Mr. President, having said this, I want to craft your indulgence to ask the nominee to take a bow and go. Thank you very much. Okay, I, um, for me, I, I, don't, I think it's a straightforward thing. It's a, it's a distinguished uh, senator, uh, but we have, I, my office received about three or four petitions, but they all border on the same issue. And the issue is that uh, there was um, a Supreme Court decision that tended to debar him from holding office for a couple of years. So maybe you can comment on that and just take about. Mr. President, I thank you for giving me that opportunity. There was no any Supreme Court pronouncement banning me for 10 years in the judgment. It's just speculations of my enemies. If you look at the judgments, all that my judgments are here with you, are before you, sir. There is no any judgment indicting me that I should not contest for election. I'm happy one of the senators here in my zone, Senator Shaheb Lau, took this matter to Federal High Court Abuja here, that the Federal High Court Jailingo has, at that time, 2019, when I contested for governorship, At that time, it was because of my age on my certificate. The, the judge now gave judgment against me. I now took the matter up to Supreme Court. When we were in the appeal court, there was nothing in the appeal court. There was no any pronouncement that, were, that they, they, they just strike out the case of lack of merit were in the Supreme Court. The same thing Mrs. Audley said that the Federal High Court Jalimbo was wrong to have done that judgment in that way. Because when I was a deputy governor in, 20s, in 2007, there is a judgment on that. The same Federal High Court Jalimbo used their veto power at that time to to nullify me. So from Supreme Court, I had to go back to Federal High Court Jalingo. Being the Supreme Court says there was no basis for the Federal High Court Jalingo to do that judgment. Then the same jurisdictions of Federal High Court Jalingo are now sat on that the same judgment and set aside that judgment that is hanging on me. And on that Senator Shah, I should offer my friend. The, the Federal High Court, Jalingo, gave judgment against you yes. that you, should, you were not qualified to contest no. on the basis of uh, perjury that you lied on oath in respect of your date of uh, birth. Then later, that same Federal High Court sat on the same matter and cleared you. Yes. And from there... No. Why we are saying that is that the moment the Federal High Court gave the first judgment, the Federal High Court had become functus official in law and can no longer sit as an appellate court over its own judgment. So you may... You will definitely... Uh, say what you need to say. We will study this because it's in the interest of uh, Nigeria and, uh, and it's in public interest. So, conclude so that uh, 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 Senator Adam Doshimole, 
you will give him chance to finish, then you can uh, respond. No. Not respond because he, I saw him raising his hand in case he has any, anything he wants to add. Okay, so. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying as soon as he finishes, he can take a bow. There was no, there was no any pronouncement. The, the matter says, all of us, the same matter, uh, Senator Shaibu Law took the matter to Federal High Court, Jali, uh, to Federal High Court Abuja here on the same matter, sir. The Federal High Court gave me the judgment. He now appealed to Appeal Court. Appeal Court now affirmed the judgment of Federal High Court. He now took the matter to, uh, to Supreme Court. The same Supreme Court now gave me the judgment. So there was no any judgment, sir. Look at the judgment properly. There was no any judgment from Supreme Court. As I'm talking, the Supreme Court are hearing me. There is no any judgment from Supreme Court nullified, indict, barring me for 10 years. There was no any judgment. You look at the paper, all the papers are before you. Yes. There was no any judgment. If there's judgment, the judgment is here. And I believe all the lawyers say are here. Sir, so can I have my floor now, as added earlier by Mr. President? Un unless, uh, unless uh, Senator Adam Oshuole has anything, because okay, so you may you may take a while. Yes, next nominee. 